What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Ron Gasso coming to you guys with a very, very special requested video. This is how to paint patent leather. Now, by all means, this is not the only method. Um, this is just the method I came up with. This is the one that works for me. I've been using this for about maybe a year or so. And that's to paint patent leather as well as foam positive material. And yes, I've done wear tests on it and I've worn my phones about three times and they haven't cracked yet. Um, and I use this, not even this method, I actually added to this method afterwards. Um, and I use it on patent leather and it works out fire. It does a phenomenal job. It's very, very flexible. It's very durable. And it will help your paint last. Um, so I have all these here. These are the products that I will be showing you guys. And I will be leaving links to these in the description uh, for what I can find. Because um, I get some of this online and some of it actually go and buy it in store. Um, but let's go ahead and give you guys a breakdown of everything. This is Angelus Too Thin. This is just uh, that you can um, run it through the airbrush. Um, it's not necessarily uh, a requirement to have this, but if you're using an airbrush, this is a requirement. Um, you don't have to airbrush it to do the patent leather. I just like to use that method because it gives me the best results without um, brush strokes. So Angelus Too Thin, to thin out the paint to make sure it runs through airbrush. Um, Angeles, when well, I actually get this from Angeles, um, if you guys do not know, I do live like maybe 20 minutes from the Angeles warehouse. So whenever I need to re-up on paint or supplies, I can always just run through and uh, cop this. But uh, I think you can get this online as well and on AngelusDirect.com. Um, this is GAC 200 and it promotes adhesion. Um, this helps paint stick to uh, plastic materials um, and it helps it stay a little bit more scratch resistant. It's not 100% gonna just block it from being scratched but it does give you extra um, protection now this is a very very special product this is the key component to painting patent leather and what this is is I'll get a little quick closer for you guys to check it out hopefully you can focus Createx colors flexible adhesion promoter by Tim Gore the bloodline makes big <laughs> makes paint stick to latex key key component this is the magic stuff. This stuff here is one, it works wonders. This is what I actually use on my foam positive material. Like I say, I wore them three times already. It hasn't cracked at all. Um, and then this is like the key component. Like I can't say that enough. This is the actual part that makes the paint stick. Um, it doesn't just work on patent leather too. You can actually use it on leather. Like I said, I've been using it for about uh, six months. So all my customers, customs that I worked on, I've been using this on all my customs and our repaints I've been doing this as well using this product one thing to keep in mind though if you do this method and you're trying to paint just regular leather you're gonna to want to add some duller because this makes your paint super super glossy so if you guys have already used Angelus paints the regular colors without any duller in it you know how glossy they can be but this actually intensifies the gloss gloss um, effect to it so I would always suggest using some duller if you're gonna paint just regular leather shoes or um, plastic materials um, Use duller because it makes your paint really, really glossy. But if you're painting patent leather, you want your glossy, your paint to look glossy anyway, so don't even worry about that. Uh, next is a spray adhesion promoter. And this is what you put on before you actually start painting. So you want to do about three to five coats of this before you start putting the paint on. Um, and you want to let it dry for about five to seven minutes in between each coat. And then what this does, it helps the paint actually have something to grasp onto onto the plastic materials because if you guys know plastic is not really a porous surface, so the paint doesn't really adhere to it or grasp onto it. So what this does, it's like a spray, and it goes over the base or the uh, yeah the base of the shoe, and then you uh, I'd say add about five coats. And five would probably be the max that you have to do, but uh, I, I used to do three to five coats on the patent leather, uh, and then I started to add my paint. Uh, this is just a Bahama Blue because I'm actually using this on a pair of Customs. I'm actually about to be using on a pair of Elevens. Uh, mixing jar from Angelus. And a uh, filter from Angelus as well. This is so I can get all the uh, clumps and everything that's inside the paint. Um, and kind of filter it out. That way it doesn't get into my airbrush and clog it up and then make my airbrush sputter. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I can actually put the, this to the side. And... This is starting out to the side a little bit. So we're just going to go ahead and shake this up. And what you want to go do is 
pour a little bit in there. I'm not usually using a lot of this, so I'm not going to use too much, but you want to get a pretty good, decent amount in there. And when you're doing uh, patent leather, you want to go do a 50 50 mix of this. So, whatever, how much ever paint you use, you want to do a 50 or a pretty much an exact amount of the uh, Createx. And you see, this is pretty thick. That's pretty good that you guys see that there. And what you want to do, mix that together. And thing to add about this. This Createx, it actually doesn't um, change the substance or the feel of your paint. So your paint still looks and feels the exact same. It has the same consistency and texture as it did when it was just regular paint. And it goes on completely clear, so you still have the exact same color. And then what I want to do now is my GAC 200. This step is really not necessary, but I just do it for extra coverage and I do about 25% of the uh, mixture so not as much of this as on the uh, Createx but that's that there set that to the side then you want to go ahead and mix this up now if you're just doing if you're going to paint it on with the paintbrush like uh, I said before feel free to go ahead and do that but because I'm airbrushing mine. I want to use too thin. Uh, this this big old pint size one. It, it, it's hard to pour. Uh, wish I would have got the uh, this, the four ounces. That makes it a little bit easier to pour. But that's actually a little too much. But that'll work. So we're going to shake this up. Put this cap on here because you don't want to spill it. Don't want to spill any of your paint. And as well, I'm going to filter it too, so it'll kind of th thicken up a little bit when I put it through the filter. So I'm going to actually put this on here. This is a um, little squeezable bottle that I got from Michaels. Comes in a six pack for about four bucks, I think. Maybe two. So what I'll do is here, put that there, and then I'll just go ahead and pour that in. Maybe just let it sit. And one thing to know about this uh, filter is you want to clean it out as soon as you're done using it. You don't want any paint to get stuck in there or um, any comes to get stuck in there because it'll become useless after a while. Um, so what you want to do is just let this sit. It takes a couple minutes. You want to help it out sometimes because sometimes it does get kind of clogged. Just want to move it around a little bit. And actually, if you put your finger in there, you'll actually see some clumps and feel some clumps in there of dry paint. So you just want to let this sit. And like I said, once you're done with this filter and all the paint is uh, dripped out, you want to go ahead and clean it right away. Not even let it sit for a couple minutes or not. You just want to go out there and just clean it with some soap and water. Or just rinse the water through. That's what I do most of the time. And you guys can see, even though that, that Createx was really, really thick, look how thin that paint is, like it's moving so smoothly. And there you have it. So then I, now this is eligible to go to the, the airbrush, and I can use it without getting any... Uh, brush strokes and it will run really really clean really really smoothly and I can get a good look and shoe and a flexible shoe and a durable shoe all by using these products so there you guys have it that is my formula for painting patent leather you guys see everything let you guys get another look at this particular product like I said this is the key component this is what you want to use and I will leave a, a link in the description box and it's very very inexpensive I think this whole 
thing was like uh, twelve dollars, and then you gotta pay for shipping. So it's not really expensive at all. So there you guys have it. I will be working on a pair of kicks just so you guys can see what they are. I've already painted these white. These are uh, the Concord Eleven Lows. Get this out the way. I already painted the white using that same method, and uh, I'm finishing up a video on these as well. Uh, just wanted to get you guys a little look at it. These will be finished soon. Okay, so I hope you guys appreciate this video. Hope you guys like it. As always, rock what you like and not what's hyped. Catch you guys on the next video. Have a good one. Peace.